Okay guys, I'm going to go ahead and start a new design here. And I'm going to come over here, file new design. And I'm going to go ahead and do a Lego Duplo uh, that will work. It's pretty exactly uh, measured and certainly we'll learn to measure here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and in my document settings right here, I'm going to change and make sure that I am in inches. So I am indeed in inches, so I just hit cancel. Um, if you want it to always show up, go up to your initials, go to preferences, <clears throat> and down here under default units design, make sure that you change that to inches. But as long as that is there, that'll always pop up in inches. So I'm going to go ahead and start making it. I'm going to hit sketch. I'm going to come down, hit the <coughs> bottom plane here. Um, and I'm going to sketch a square. That's a type of rectangle. And then more specifically, I use center rectangle. It's by far our best practice. I'm going to place that right here on this middle here, and you'll see why a little bit later. I'm going to go ahead and just draw out a generic uh, square. It's maybe not even a square. It could be a rectangle, and then I'll dimension it. So I made it that. I'm going to go ahead and come up here to dimension, and I'm going to tell that to be 1.252. Hit Enter. I'm then going to click on that, left click, drag out, 1.252, and hit enter. And that gives me the exact square that I want. I'm going to go ahead and hit finish sketch. Now I'm going to extrude that up. So I come down here. If it's not clicked on, I click on it. I can drag it up, but that doesn't give me as much. So I'm going to come over here and type in there. I want that to be 0.756 inches. <coughs> you can see that that is... Uh, that's the basic Duplo block in size and shape. I'm now going to go ahead and put the four studs on the top. The studs are the cylinders going around the top. So I'm going to sketch on this top plane. Make sure I select that. It'll kind of gray over when I get there. And I'm going to put a circle on there randomly. And then I'm going to dimension the circle. All right. That circle is to be point. 371 inches and then I'm going to locate it so while it's still in sketch dimensions I'm going to I'm going to hit cancel I'm going to click on the dimension button I'm going to hit the center of the circle and then I'm going to come up here to this line and the center of the circle and I want that to be 0 0.309 enter <coughs> and from this line to there I want that to be 0 0.309. So that's located it correctly. I'm going to go ahead and sketch one more circle inside. And I'm just going to randomly um, assign that. But I want it to be a little thinner. I'm going to go ahead and hit finish sketch. All right, so now I have two circles on there. And I'm going to extrude that up 0.2 inches. All right, so that goes up 0.2 inches. I could type that in there. I'm going to hit OK. I'm also going to go ahead and put a little chamfer on here. So I come up to that edge right there, and I'm going to right-click and hit chamfer. And I'm going to give it a chamfer of 0 0.05. Um, eh, maybe a little less. 0 0.04. Eh, maybe even a little bit less. 0 0.03. Nice. Now you can see what that's going to do is the functionality of it is anything that fits tight, it'll kind of help shoehorn itself into natural fits. Okay, now I don't want to do that three more times. Instead, I'm going to use the pattern function. So I'm going to come over here under create, and I'm going to use a circular pattern. Now, I want to make sure that this says features, and then I'm going to choose this and the chamfer, chamfer and that. Um, my axis, now here's the advantage of doing a center circle. I can just use this axis that comes out of the XY origin and it is in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and tell it that I want four of them and I'm going to hit OK. And that's making it pretty easy. So I've extruded a uh, Kind of a complex shape there. I put a little chamfer on it, but then I use pattern to make it again. So that certainly works for my top. I'm going to go on to the bottom now. The uh, 
bottom. There's a couple ways of doing this bottom here. I could certainly draw on the bottom. So I could come over here and maybe use a center rectangle and bring it out there to be one point um, 052 and then I'm going to hit tab 1.052 enter and I can finish that sketch and then extrude that and I could take it up in there say 0.656 oops I gotta have a negative in front of that don't I a negative in front of that so it'll go up in there and hit OK and <clears throat> that does that job I'll show you a little bit easier way to do that I'm gonna back out before I made that little drawing on the bottom and I'll show you a, even an easier way of doing that underneath modify is a command called shell and you can see by the pop-up there what it kinda does I'm gonna choose that and tell it to have a wall thickness of 0.1 so a tenth of an inch and hit return and you can see that does the same thing that shell commands kind of a nice feature all right, so kind of looking like this. If you examine the Duplo in your your uh, hand, it kind of looks like this. Obviously, this chamfer is a little bit of an addition there, but just makes it a little more functional, a little, little easier to slide in. So now I'm going to go ahead and do this center peg down here on the bottom. So I'm going to sketch, and I'm going to go ahead and choose that plane right there. I'm going to play a little trick because I don't want to measure anymore or do any math. So I'm going to go here to where I can see the top. I'm still in drawing mode. And I'm going to under create. I'm going to go come down here to project. And I'm going to project. I'm going to choose the outside circles of these studs. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hit OK. Now, when I click on the bottom here, you can see that I can see those. Now, I couldn't extrude them or anything like that. But what I can do is when I go to create my circle, I can actually have that snap too, and I can go until that touches that. So I can just draw that out, and you can see now that that's going to give me a perfect fit, which again, that's kind of the point of that if you think about how that works. I'm going to go ahead and do another circle in between, and that's just going to be largely arbitrary as far as the size. Um, really depends upon the type of material how strong you want that to be but I just arbitrarily placed that uh, that inside dimension now I will extrude this just that and I'm gonna take it down 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 I wanna do it as a join and I wanna do that point six five six enter so what I'm gonna have there on the bottom now is I'm gonna have that extruded down and looking pretty pretty good so very pleased with that okay um, so that in and of itself would work I want to take a look at adding some fins to this uh, the fins are what are going to be on the outside coming off the outside walls and going in the studs so for that I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna choose this plane to draw on because I want to want to be at the bottom they don't need to extend all the way up and then I'm going to go ahead and play the same trick with projecting my geometry. So under create, I'm going to project that geometry. And I'm only going to do one here because I'll just rotate it around uh, in a circular pattern anyways. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to kind of get down here where I can see the bottom. So now I want to add some fins to this. Um, the actual shape and functionality notice the fins there's not as much room because my walls are a little thicker than the ones that might be in your hand but I want to go ahead and <clears throat> draw on here a rectangle now I'd like to place my first corner I suppose uh, right here and I'll go there and then I'll just simply reflect that and I'm going to use another creative uh, tool I'm going to mirror this line this line and this line about this line and hit OK so now I got a nice little bump there 
that would do that. So I'm now going to go ahead and finish that sketch and then I'll extrude this one and this one. I'm going to go to a view where I can see a little bit and I'm going to just come up that 0.2 inches with a join. And we'll take a look at what that did. Okay, so that made a little bump. Now I'd like to have it reflected over to here. Uh, once I have both of them, I can just do a circular pattern. Um, I do not have um, a line for this, but I can certainly make a line. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to draw. And I'm going to just go put a line from there to there. And I'll finish the sketch. Now I'm going to go up and I'm going to use a mirror of this. Oops, I need to change it to features. That's what was, was going on. And I have to turn this a little bit. Boy. Okay, guys, figured out my problem. I was trying, I'm trying to reflect this in a mirror about that line. I can't do that about a line. I have to do it about a plane. So I'm going to put a plane in here. I'm going to make a plane through two edges. Plane, and I'm going to use this edge and this edge and hit OK. Now I'm going to come up here to mirror, and I'm going to choose that and then I'm going to choose that as a feature and then for my mirror plane oh, so I'll come over here features and then for my mirror plane I'm going to choose that and hit OK. And see if that did what I wanted it to do. And it did not. Okay. Mr. Spurgeon's struggling here. 